everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. It is finally time to finish the spooky strawberry dress project or spooky spiderweb separates project by making a bodice. Now I made this skirt at this point like probably close to a month ago if not more and honestly I've been trying to come up with a design for the bodice and it's been really hard. I have worn this skirt now so many times and I am so so thankful that I decided to do two separate pieces because this skirt has been getting a lot of wear and I just feel like any sort of bodice made out of this fabric is going to be very much over the top. So I guess I'm just going to kind of embrace that over the top feeling and go for it. Now I'm also going to try to make this super super quickly because today is actually Saturday night. This is normally when I would be finishing a project but my mom's been here all week so I haven't been sewing at all. I've not even gone into the sewing room. So I have come up with a design that I do still have to mock up and I hope that it's going to work and hopefully it will work together very very quickly and then I can also make a hat for this and then do all of that before Halloween and in time to edit these videos so they will come out before Halloween. So oddly enough the design or the pattern that I am using as my jumping off point is really kind of out there. It's actually Simplicity 9090, which is like a fantasy renaissance-ish gown, this one right here. And that is because I just kind of like the shape of the bodice that you can see in the line drawing here. And I just kind of like this shape. And I'm thinking that it will be relatively easy to incorporate this into something that could be done for daily wear. Or, okay, let's be honest, this is not a daily wear bodice. This is like a costume. So this is basically going to be my Halloween costume. So I want a bodice that is quite fitted. However, I'm going to make this a front closing bodice. It currently closes up the back, I believe, with a zipper. Mm, yes, with a zipper. And I don't want it to close up the back with a zipper. I want it to close up the front with either buttons or hooks and eyes or laces. Again, I really haven't made a lot of decisions on this, which is hard considering it's supposed to be done now. So I'm going into this kind of blind. The sleeves will have a puff top, but then there will be a lower portion as well, since this is a fall outfit. And I think the lower portion is going to be a fitted sleeve just because a bell sleeve is like so not at all practical. And I want a modicum of practicality, I guess, with this. My guess is that I will probably wind up raising the neckline a little bit. But beyond that, I'm hoping that it'll be pretty straightforward. I have all of the pattern pieces cut out that are required by this pattern, and I am going to start mocking them up. The finished bust measurement, although this only goes up to a 22, whereas I would be probably a 24, the finished bust measurement has ease, because that makes sense for a fitted bodice, right? So the ease on this bust measurement makes this my size. The waist is almost certainly going to be too small. So I am going to increase the waist size and I will also increase probably the rise of the neckline in the center front piece because that's its own piece. Otherwise it's gonna come straight down here for the side. So those are fine. So I'll increase the height of the neckline there and I'll probably wind up increasing the length of the bodice in the fronts and side fronts. And then I'm gonna cut out that mock-up and see what happens. So mock-up is not so successful. I increased the length a ton because I wanted this to be able to go past my waist and then like spring out like hip spring. But even with doing the hip spring that I put in there, there is no hip spring. Negative hip spring? Like it's digging. And then the bust on the other hand, I feel like I could fit two of me in here. I didn't increase the bust size. Like what? what is going on here. This was supposed to be a half inch smaller than my bust. And then the straps, I did increase the length a half inch, well I guess an inch total, which more than that needs to come out. So that's annoying. So I've got a lot of work to do and I may need to recut because the hips are too small and I would wind up with very, very tiny seam allowance. I think it also needs to come in at the waist, which will give the hips more spring just from doing that. But like the bust is the biggest problem because it's enormous. So I have a lot of stuff to figure out of how to make this work, but this is kind of frustrating that it didn't work this much. 
All right, so I have pinned out a whole bunch of this side front seam here, particularly with the side piece is really where I've pinned it out. And I'm also taking it in at the waist in a few places, taking it in at the neck, shortening the shoulders, scooping out the arms I underneath. Hopefully all of those changes will work and make this bodice fit. Okay, I think I figured out all of the fit issues. There was a lot that I wound up cutting off of the side front bust seam in particular that was kind of ridiculous. I believe this is how much was cut off there. So a lot. And then I also in the back tapered it in a ton. There's still more, honestly, I think you can probably see that it's poofing right here. So there's more that I have to take out there, but that should be easy. I've marked that. And then I also, because I took in this part, I wound up cutting in the arm size a little bit here, but I think the look of it is nice. I didn't wind up taking the shoulder up nearly so much as I had thought because by the time I did those other fixes, the shoulder, the inner shoulder was correct. The outer shoulder, I think I took in a half an inch. So it's a little shorter there. And that's because I tend to have slopey shoulders. So I wind up often taking in here, but not taking in here. And then I did also change the center front line a little bit. I'm hoping it won't affect stuff too much. I also wound up cutting to here. I really don't want to have to recut these, but we'll see how that goes because I might have to. And otherwise though, I think, I mean, I'm gonna try this maybe with just a small seam allowance or maybe even just let the interlining kind of float a little separately from the outer and cut the outer larger. I don't know, because the outer, this is gonna be the interlining or the inter whatever layer, the structure layer, and then the outer is going to be the purple cotton, one layer of the glitter tool, I think, and one layer of the spider web. So, I'm combining a lot of stuff here and I hope that it all works. I also hope it doesn't get like really scratchy. My arms will be in sleeves, so it should be okay. And honestly, the spider web layer is actually very soft. So hopefully that works out all right. And I think I'm going to go with a button front closure. So it will overlap a little and then have buttons, but it might actually be faux buttons. I have a feeling I'm gonna do hooks and eyes with faux buttons over and I have these kind of cute black like cut plastic buttons that should be nicely sparkly but not like too obtrusive. So once I get all of this done, then I will figure out the sleeves. But again, I think it's gonna be kind of a puffy upper with a more fitted lower. Either that or I might go with just small puff overall. And I haven't decided yet if I should line it with cotton, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to line that with cotton. So a lot to do on this, but at least during night one here, I have gotten the mock-up sorted. So tomorrow I can cut everything out. Well, it is a couple of days later because it took me so long to cut everything out yesterday. So there are four layers in every single one of these pieces and there are eight pieces all together. So it was a lot to cut out. I cut it all out, I pinned it all together. Today I flatlined it all with the serger and assembled it. It is somehow hugely overlapping in the front. Like I'm not sure what happened there and I'm also starting to second guess the idea of the buttons thinking maybe I should do lace up instead. It's also too high in the armpit so I'm gonna have to cut that down a little and I'm gonna have to even out the hem here because it's just kind of like pointy on the sides so I'll have to even that but overall it's pretty good it's just this like overlap that is somehow huge. So I've got a little bit of stuff to figure out. I have to decide whether I want the lace up or the buttons. I kind of held up some buttons and didn't fall in love with them. So I got some thinking to do. So apparently the last little clip that I recorded did not save on my camera for some reason. But basically when I had put these together edge to edge, I had this huge fin down the center front that it was just like, it was huge. So part of it was that I just had too much fabric. I wound up cutting off just this much out of each of them. And then the other part was the fact that I did build this for an overlap because of the hooks and eyes and the buttons, which is what I have decided to do. So I have now 
folded in here. There's one and a half inches on each side that are folded in and they are going to get overlapped. So there's like a one inch segment here that will overlap a one inch segment on here and have the hooks and eyes and then the fake buttons on the top here. So now what I have to do is I have to hand sew the inside of this down. It's all pressed and pinned in place. And I am also going to put bias binding around the neck and also around the bottom hem waist area here. So that way when it all closes up, it'll be like a cute little bodice with just a tiny bit of flare there at the waist. I don't remember if I mentioned this, but from my mock-up to the actual cutout pattern, I did add a half inch length around the sides and front because I liked where it was hitting exactly before being folded up. So I added that little bit. I wound up cutting just a little bit right off of the very side here because it was making a weird point. So that got cut off but, and I lowered the arm size just a little bit. I'm a little worried that it still needs a bit more to go, but I think I will establish that once I put the sleeves in because I do plan to do sleeves, except of course that it's already Monday night and yeah, this was supposed to be finished, you know, last week when my parents were here. Anyway, I'm going to go do this and the binding and all of the hand sewing because all of the binding will have to be sewn down by hand so that I don't see the stitches on the outside, which means I will be back much later once I have hooks and eyes on probably also and am ready to do sleeves. Well, it has now been another two days because it is now Wednesday, but the bodice portion is complete. So yesterday I was just hand sewing for forever. I sewed down the facings on both of the front edges here and then I also sewed down all of the binding on the neckline and all of the binding on the waistline and I sewed on 10 hooks and bars on the inside. I just now finished sewing on the decorative buttons on the outside here and now I can finally go and start the sleeves. So I was also really trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the sleeves yesterday, I was having a mental block. I just could not decide. But I finally came across an image on Instagram of someone who was doing kind of a witchy look and she had a puffed sleeve that was like not super puffed but probably about the size of my gunny socks dress sleeves and it was puffed but it only went to about here like three quarter length and then the rest of the sleeve was fitted and I thought that that looked really cute so I am going to give that a go for this. Now of course I don't think I actually saved or made a pattern from my gunny socks sleeves. I just had that base pattern and then made it up and altered it and didn't save any of that information. So kind of will have to figure that out again. I know it was this puff size at the top, which is the hardest part, and then it had tapered in significantly. So it should not be too hard to figure out. And then the, this part here will just be wide enough to go around my wrist at the bottom and wide enough for this part of my arm up at the top. And I sh will sew that together out of three layers. So just like the bodice, I won't be using the two layers of the glitter tool. I'll just have the purple cotton, the glitter tool, and the spider web mesh. So that's what's going to make up both the puffed part of the sleeve and the fitted part of the sleeve. And I am going to go do a mock-up of that right now. So I was super, super tempted to not do a mock-up on the sleeve at all. Like I was literally going to cut it out in all of the layers and then my better judgment got the better of me and I decided to kind of compromise and do the sleeve mock-up in the actual cotton but not the other layers that I have less extra of. So I did my mock-up and honestly I could have just cut the whole thing. Like I think it's pretty much exactly what I want. My only like maybe I'm not sure it's perfect is I do wonder it's kind of a twofold I think either this portion of the sleeve needs to be just a hair longer or possibly it's just that it needs to be a bit tighter because where this is sitting right now it is too loose to stay put so it falls down my arm which deflates the puff because it falls down my arm whereas if I pull it up just a little bit then it's too short for my wrist but now it's at a place where it is staying on my arm so I think that really probably what it is is that it needs to be tighter because I think if that if this sat here and this were tighter 
I think it would stay right where it is here. And also, if I get it a little tighter on the wrist, it won't look quite so gappy. I thought about doing a button closure on the wrist to get it really nice and tight, but that's a lot of extra work that I don't want to have to do. So I think I'm just going to make this bottom portion just a hair tighter, like, I don't know, maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that total tighter all the way down. Though, of course, I will also be adding more layers and layers that don't stretch. So it could be, maybe I should just cut it out as is and then see how it is when all of the layers are together and I can always take it in then. But yeah, otherwise we're like super, super close. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this mock-up and just cut everything out in the actual. By the way, I did wind up using that same sleeve pattern as a base and I realized I could just go measure how far the gunny sacks dress sleeves are across like how wide they are so that's what I did it is uh 10 and a half including seam allowance inches across right here where it goes into the arm and it tapers a little bit down from the arm's eye where I think it's about 26 inches across total so that's what it is measurements on this if you care I don't know that you do because every arm is going to be different but this portion here is nine inches long including the seam allowance and then I think I wound up being yeah, 13 and a half inches around, including seam allowance at the top and 10.25 inches around at the waist. But again, that's going to probably get a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go cut everything else out and hopefully finish this up tonight. So I did wind up taking in the sleeve here just down by the wrist. I didn't take it in and all up here, but the wrists were just too big and gaping. So I took in both of them. However, I actually found out that my left arm is just a little bit larger than my right arm. So the right arm I took in a little bit extra and I marked each one with an R and an L so that I would know which one was which. And that way they can be really much better fitted to my arm. So the sleeves are now done. I've bound the inside with bias tape at the hem. And so I sewed that part down by hand, which means the bodice is done. Also, my floor is once again a glitter disaster zone just from making this bodice. Here is a little teaser tonight of the bodice. I am hoping to go out and take some pictures and video tomorrow to show you in a little mini reveal next, but the project is not actually done. So there's one very important thing that always kind of designates a witch, and that is a witch's hat. So please make sure that you check back for the next video because the hat is going to be one of my Saturday videos because it's Halloween this week. We're run out of time to do Halloween things. So I'm going to start working on the hat tomorrow and put it again in that separate video. But I'm very pleased with the bodice and let's go do a little reveal before it starts raining forever, which is I'm worried about doing the actual reveal with the hat video because it's going to rain every day for the next forever starting tomorrow.
So I decided to give you a bit more of a reveal than I was originally planning because it dawned on me that it wouldn't make much sense to give you a making a hat video and then show the reveal without that hat. So there will be a different reveal, I guess, for that video. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll finally pair it with the 1890s bodice since that was the original reason for me making this into separates. And I am so glad that I did. Yesterday when I tried this on, I was wearing it with a velvet skirt that I had done from an old history bounding video several months ago and it looked fantastic. I've worn this skirt with tons of other things already. I'm so glad I made this into separates. The surprising part about today though was that I decided I liked the look better better with the bodice tucked into the skirt and then adding this buckle and a ribbon belt. The buckle is also from that same history bounding video. I got this at an estate sale along with that velvet skirt and I just really liked the look of having the buckle there. I feel like it's a nice way to accessorize it. I also went with this is literally like elasticated trim that has little rhinestones on it. I just tied it in the back and this is a necklace that I got for my Rapunzel Dapper Dirndl bound a couple years ago. This hat is just a wool blank basically that's been sitting in my closet. I mean I got it from the thrift store. And then this wig, this I bought for this project. I will leave a link to this wig below. It's from Amazon. It was super inexpensive for the price. Amazing quality. I did have to trim the bangs a little bit but honestly I kind of like the blue hair on me. I don't know. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the blue hair. I've always been too scared to try anything but a natural color so maybe I should go blue. I don't know. Let me know what you think. So overall, I am super, super pleased with how this bodice and this project has been turning out so far. I'm excited to make the hat and we'll see what the final, final look looks like on Saturday's video. So do make sure that you either are subscribed, which would be great, or that you check back on Saturday to see that final reveal look. But I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi down down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron, Sharon. Again, thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and have a happy Halloween this weekend. And I will see you all in my next video. Happy sewing!